Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Good afternoon and welcome to another episode of Likeable Science here on Think Tech Hawaii. Likeable Science is about why science matters to us all, why it's a vital and dynamic part of everyone's life, everyone's daily life. And we've got a great show today where we're really going to get into something that people understand. I have Tyler Rouse here with me. Welcome, Tyler. Thank you. Tyler is the owner and data recovery engineer for Hawaii Recovery, LLC, and mm -hmm. it's a, co a company that does data recovery, right? Absolutely. As its name sort of implies. <laughs> and this is when your computer goes bad and suddenly you can't get the, the data you need, be they your old pictures, your old term papers, your current bank statements, whatever it may be, right? Right. Pretty much your entire digital life on that computer right. is on that hard drive. Yeah, and when computers, when hard drives go bad or you can't access things and you can't just reboot it and start it up and get it back, well, what do <laughs> right. you do? <laughs> right, yeah, so um, uh, at Data Recovery Lab, what we do is when, when uh, individuals have that failed uh, hard drive or that storage media, uh, they're able to send it out to us. Um, you know, we do have a full, a full service clean room, mm -hmm. uh, so we're able to open the drives, we're able to switch out you know, critical components in order to get that drive back up and running again, recover the data, and then send it back to the client. Cool, that's, that's uh, it's critical stuff, and yet people mm -hmm. don't think about it a lot. Everyone these days thinks, hey, I'm, I'm hooked up, I got my data up in the cloud, it's safe, right? Right, right. So um, uh, unfortunately, um, uh, over 80% of America actually doesn't back up at all, um, which wow, is really? an astounding number. Yeah. Um, in fact, uh, the, the larger percentage of that is actually corporations or businesses that are backing up their data, which means that um, at, at a home, like a residence, um, almost, uh, the, or almost all of America, a very large percentage of America doesn't have any backups at all, hmm. despite the importance of the data that they have on that computer. Yeah. Yeah, because a lot of what people put on a computer is you know very valuable stuff. They, they, these days, all your pictures live there, right? You know, uh, absolutely. You know, and your phone is full, of course. Right, absolutely. <laughs> and and it's um, it, it's very critical because these are all moments of your life, mm -hmm. right? Everything that's on your hard drive that you placed on there equates to time, mm -hmm. right? If it's a picture or a video, it equates to a memory that you can never go back to, right? Right, irreplaceable, absolutely irreplaceable. Um, it's documentation for legal purposes, for right. jobs, for whatever you may have. You know, absolutely, it's it's, it's important stuff. And yeah, absolutely. You, you you know, it used to be kept this all on paper and it was filed away neatly somewhere, supposedly. Right. Uh, <coughs> and then, of course, if your house burned, you lost it. But uh, right. Yeah, definitely. <coughs> Um, some of those, uh, you know, some of those issues still exist. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, for instance, uh, you know, backups at home. Um, you know, there there are still issues that can occur with it. But uh, hopefully, with uh, today, with our, our line of discussion, we're uh, able to uh, educate the viewers about backups, data recovery, and how to save your data and eliminate needing to go to a company like ours. Right. So you you you, you mentioned earlier, your company you get things. And you, you mentioned the clean room. Now, clean mm -hmm. room is a facility basically that has is sort of sealed off, has mm -hmm. super well ventilated but, but extremely highly filtered air. Right. Uh, so that basically the, the clean rooms, at least that I used to work in at University of Washington, were said they had one-tenth the contaminant levels mm -hmm. of hospital operating rooms. Right, you know. so um, um, every clean room and clean bench, uh, based on the filter type that's used, um, every filter is gonna have an ISO uh, class. Mm -hmm. The ISO uh, determines the um, uh, sanitation of the air that's entering that environment. Uh, and you're absolutely right, the clean room is, is exactly intended to eliminate as much dust and debris in the air as possible, so that way it doesn't end up inside the drives that we're working on. Right, because these drives, mm -hmm. if they get dust on them, that, that a speck of dust that looks invisible to us is a big chunk of grip on this drive, right? Absolutely, and it's it's um, it's an interesting concept. Uh, something that contains all of our data that is irreplaceable is on something so incredibly fragile. Mm -hmm. um, you know, just like you were saying, a speck of dust. Um, you know, inside the drive, if the heads go over that speck of dust, it can irre you know irreplaceably damage the platter or damage that head, uh, and, and entirely um, you know render it irrecoverable. Uh, so a, a clean room, and especially having a good clean room, um, is is critically important to our work in data recovery. Oh, mm -hmm. that, that's that's great. So uh, then, 
let's talk a little bit about how, you know, how, how does good data go bad, you know? Gotcha. Uh, what can happen to data? What, what, what are the sort of failure modes, right? So uh, there's, there's three different areas of failure. Um, there's physical failure, there's firmware failure, and software failure. Uh, physical failure um, is where a, a physical component on the actual drive itself were to fail, which contributes to not be, you know, functioning properly. Um, a firmware failure is where the, the storage media itself has an issue identifying itself or an issue communicating with the computer. Um, and a software failure is that interaction between the computer and the, the storage media itself where it actually fails at that level. Okay. Um, well, let's, let's, let's dissect those a little bit for just a second. Sure. So the, the first, that first mode of mm -hmm. a physical failure, so your, your disk in your computer stops mm -hmm. spinning. You know? Right. So um, now what we're looking at right here is these, these two right here are your most common hard drive types. Mm -hmm. These are called hard disk drives. And what this is, is here, this is a hard disk, mm -hmm. right? This is a, a polycarbonate platter that has been coated with a metallic filament. Uh, which allows it to to store data. Mm -hmm. Now this section here is called the head stack. Right. Now right here in the very tip, there's little tiny heads. They're mm -hmm. they're about the size of actually the tip of this pen, mm -hmm. and uh, those will actually travel just over the top of the platter, right. um, and it'll read the data uh, from that. Right. Right. Not quite touching the platter, right? Correct. But just barely off of it, but very 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 close, which is I, why a, a speck of dust can be so problematical, right? Absolutely. Um, in, in fact, it's actually about a sixth of the width of a human hair. Okay, right. Right, so um, it, it's incredibly tiny. Um, now, down here, we have what's called a magnetic servo. Mm -hmm. What this does is that this um, uses an induction coil, which is copper, uh, in order to push power through it and move the heads back and forth on the mm -hmm. platter. Right. So using this pivot point here, as power is applied, it'll end up being moved to the left and the right, so mm -hmm. that way the heads can traverse the, uh, the platter and be able mm -hmm. to read the data. Okay. So this is the most common uh, two types of drives that are in computers now, okay. um, and these are the most susceptible as hard disk drives to being um, uh, susceptible to hardware failure. Okay. Right. So uh, now they're not limited just to disk drives, right. uh, even solid state drives, M2s, MSATAs, all these new cutting edge uh, storage medias that we're using today and all of our new modern computers can also still have physical failures as well. Okay. So, uh, and then the next, you went into what you called firmware failures. Mm -hmm. Now that's... So, firmware, uh, uh, so let's say for instance, uh, again, using these two drives here. Uh, so, this drive is a Western Digital. Western mm -hmm. Digital uses um, dozens and dozens of firmware modules and service area modules. Uh, which work together to essentially tell the, tell the hard drive how to communicate properly with the computer, okay. uh, how to read the data properly, how to translate it so that computer can understand it, and then that way you know, the computer knows what to do with mm -hmm. it. Um, so that's, that's the firmware level there. Okay. Each one of these modules has a different purpose mm -hmm. uh, to keep the drive operational and functioning. Okay. Now, on the software, software side. That's more coding almost, right? Right, yeah. So that's, that's the interaction of the hard drive itself to the actual uh, computer. So that's from... From what the uh, the firmware does, once it ends that point, which stops at the 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 front of the drive, everything beyond that, as far as communicating with the computer, is on that software level. Mm -hmm. Now the software is actually stored on the drive; it's not stored on the computer. Mm -hmm. um, and within that, uh, if there's a failure there, then again the, the hard drive will will fail to recognize on the computer. So how so what do you what do you do when somebody brings in a drive and says it don't work? <laughs> uh, well, you know, there's there's always a series you know, of questions that we ask right. them. Uh, you know, one of the most important questions is you open the drive. Right. There's a lot of um, you know a lot of clients that we have that they'll go online, they'll Google, and they'll research, and they'll say, hey, you know, based on what you're talking about, it sounds like stuck heads, right? Mm -hmm. So what stuck heads is is uh, where the heads actually get stuck on the platters themselves. Okay. Now this one is an enterprise drive, so the heads are actually parked in the center of the platter. Okay. Now, on this one over here, and let me move this over, you'll see that little tiny orange piece. Right. Now, that small orange piece, which is located, oh, wrong side, located here, mm -hmm. right, is where the heads would sit on a typical drive. Okay. So, um, now, with that being said, um, that, that, you know, failures can occur at, at, at any point in time, right. um, you know, from, from that. So, yeah. But then you 
and you sort of have to st step by step b break it down and go through and sort of see what part is working, what part isn't working. Right. I, I'm sorry. I, I prematurely uh, closed my statement. Um, so uh, from this, uh, if the drive's already been opened, um, you know, we, we know that, that we should expect uh, dust and particulates inside mm -hmm. the drive, so we need to go through an actual clean room process. Uh, another thing we're going to be looking at is actually right here on the platters, um, if you have what's called a collapsed head, that means that the head itself has become damaged. It's collapsed and torn off from the head stack. Ah. Right? And again, the head stack is this little part right here. Okay. Now, from, from that head stack, if it does tear away, if the platters continue to spin, it can dig into the platters like a chisel. Mm. That Can't type of damage <laughs> is entirely irrecoverable from. Uh -huh. um, so unfortunately, uh, that's, that's that, uh, that catch-all. That, right. um, if that damage exists, there's nothing that anybody can do about that. Otherwise, uh, typically what ends up happening is that if the, the heads are stuck on the platter, we would end up using a special tool called a head unstick kit. And that would actually move the heads off of the platters and onto uh, this orange piece that was on this drive right over here. Now, um, the head stack replacement uh, would be the next step. If the heads are damaged because they touch the platter, we would actually replace the entire head stack so we would replace this component so that way everything inside that drive can read the platters properly. Uh -huh. okay. And if that doesn't work, then now we go into a much more advanced uh, session of data recovery where we start um, actually taking the platters out of this drive and uh -huh. start moving it into other drives. Okay. Um, so that way we can preserve so as much the, hardware as possible. So you actually have separate drives. Mm -hmm. You can actually pull the disks out and set them this drive in and, and read it. Right. Their own heads, basically, if, if it hasn't been too badly damaged. Correct, yeah. <laughs> so when, when, any, when any part inside of a hard drive is damaged, uh, you know, whether it's the, uh, the head stack, whether it's the magnetic servo, uh, if it's the printed circuit board, which is located on the back of a drive, mm -hmm. right? Um, so whatever, that, you know, whatever the, the type of damage is, um, every part would come from what's called the donor drive. And donor drives are pretty expensive, but um, that's where we would end up getting those parts from. Um, unfortunately, there's no repairing parts. You can only replace them. Right. Um, so, yeah. Huh. Okay, that, that's, that's good. Um, and it, it does seem like we're, we're in, a, in an era of, you know, there's more and more, you, the, the phrase of big data now is, mm -hmm. is all around us, right? Everything's big data, all, all right. this. Uh, genomic data now, uh, the, uh, all, all your, your phone works, uh, Siri can direct you through directions through big data sets basically. Right. So there's more and more data around. It seems only reasonable to expect that we're going to see more and more data failures, right? Well, yes. Uh, I mean, data store, well, storage mediums um, are becoming more and more reliable as we go along. Mm -hmm. um, a prime example is that this disk drive here has been around for the birth of computers. Mm -hmm. um, the only thing that's changed is the connector type. So here, you know, we see a SATA connector, okay. right, which is serial over ATA. Mm -hmm. um, what used to be around is a 48-pin uh, IDE connector, uh, the old gray ribbon cables that used to be okay. in the old computers. Uh, however, we've moved away primarily from um, disk drives. Now, they're still being manufactured. They're still reliable pieces of equipment. However, we want to move away from that, and we want to move into something that's more reliable that can protect our data even more. Right. So this here is a prime example of what we're moving towards. This is what's called an M-SATA um, solid-state drive. And what this does is that this has absolutely no moving components. And it's a solid chip similar to your processor, similar to your RAM or your motherboard within your computer. However, these are still susceptible to hardware failures yeah. and software and firmware failures as well. And we're going we're gonna to talk more about those failures and how mm -hmm. they happen and what, what you do about them. When we come back right now, we're going to take a little bit of a break here. I'm Ethan Allen, your host of uh, I think Tech uh, Hawaii here, Likeable Science. Uh, Tyler Rose from uh, Data Recovery is with me, and we're talking about data recovery. We'll be back in one minute. Aloha, I am Howard Wig. I am the proud host of Code Green for Think Tech Hawaii. I appear every other Monday at 3, and I have really, really exciting guests on the exciting topic of energy efficiency. Hope to see you there. Aloha, I'm Jay Fidel, one of the hosts of Asia in Review, which is broadcast Monday afternoons on thinktechhawaii.com. 
We cover, we study news and politics in and affecting Asia. We work hard to bring you the most interesting subjects and guests who will raise your awareness. Please join us Mondays every week on Asia in Review on thinktechhawaii.com and also on YouTube and iTunes. Thanks for watching. We'll see you then. Aloha, she she, and Saijian. And you're back here on Likeable Science on Think Tech Hawaii. I'm your host, Ethan Allen. Tyler Rouse from Data Recovery LLC is with me, or Hawaii Recovery, sorry, mm -hmm. okay. uh, is with me today. And we're talking about data recovery and computers. And we were talking about the storage media of various types and the changes that have gone on and all the things that can and inevitably will go wrong with them, right? You were Absolutely. telling me actually before, we, before the show that your backup drive after four or five years really is starting to fail itself almost inevitably sort of on a st statistical basis. It's beginning right. to... Well, just like with but, anything mechanical, uh, right. you know, mechanical parts are, are designed to wear out right. over time. And it, it stands true to your hard drive the same as your car. Yeah. So uh, when that happens, uh, th and you can't get it, and somebody comes to you and says, fix this for me, mm -hmm. and you say, that will be... Right. So for us, um, we're a little different than, your, right. than your, you know, your mainline data recovery labs. Right. So for us, we're flat rate regardless of complexity or data recovery size, but it's still pretty expensive. Mm -hmm. it, you know, for a regular consumer, it costs them $500 to get a data recovery uh, through our shop. Mm -hmm. uh, now, granted, it's a flat rate, so it doesn't increase or anything like that. No surprises. But um, typically, what most clients see across the, you know, across the nation is between $800 and $2,000 for a single drive recovery. Mm -hmm. Uh, money that, I, at least I don't have two grand yeah. sitting yeah, right. that I can I expend on one item. I got a lot better things to do with that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So um, uh, unfortunately, you know, there's a lot of clients that end up turning around and they say, I, you know, I can't afford this or I can't justify it. So therefore, they lost the pictures of their kids growing up or right. they lost the work that they spent the last three years right. generating. Right. Um, so. You know, in that case, uh, it's very unfortunate that we have clients that you know that that forego the recovery of their data because it's obviously very important to them. So, the next thing that we do is we try to educate them on backups right. and how we can prevent them from coming to our shop again in the future. Right. And this is what I, I was sort of joking about earlier. Everyone these days sort of thinks, oh, well, you know, the cloud exists and mm -hmm. my stuff's on Google Drive, therefore it's, it's all safe and protected, and I don't have to worry about this anymore. Right. Um, unfortunately. So that's true. It's great that we have uh, alternatives such as mm -hmm. the cloud. Um, it, it's fantastic because the, the redundancy of hard drives, right, the redundancy of your data to prevent data loss is done for you. Mm -hmm. um, however, there's still limitations to the cloud. Mm -hmm. um, a prime example for, for the cloud is that you can't really run an operating system on it. You can kind of, but um, for your regular consumer, the operating system will always be on your local hard drive. Okay. Um, if you did not set up your backup solution, your backup solution is not working for you, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and that's one of the big misconceptions a lot of individuals have because they talk about, hey, I have uh, Dropbox, I have Google Drive, mm -hmm. I have Azure, um, and, you know, I have AWS. And so, although that's fantastic, if they didn't actually set it up and start setting up a backup plan, mm -hmm. it's not backing up any of your data. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and unfortunately, we do see that a lot where, where clients believe it's on the cloud until they come in and we try to assist them in retrieving it from the cloud, and then we determine that it, it doesn't exist there. Right, or they're, yeah, they're missing parts, but critical parts of it, yeah. Right, exactly. Yeah. And, and yeah, backing up really isn't that hard, right? I mean, it's, it's mm -hmm. not, it's, if, again, it's one of these sort of things which if you make it a part of your life and just a, it's a normal part of your, for how, how your life goes about your daily, it doesn't have to be daily, I'm sure, but so tell, tell us a little bit about, about what, what it takes really to, to do backup the way it should be done. Backing up nowadays is yeah. really easy, super easy. Um, now, for all these software designers that are making these backup programs, they want to make it consumer friendly. They want to make it really easy. Right. And there's programs out there where it's one button. You click one button and it mm -hmm. starts backing up everything. Mm -hmm. um, and there's programs out there that are much more complex, you know, to give you variable options and et cetera. Uh, but the, you know, so a lot of these programs can be user friendly. So even for those that, that aren't really, you know, computer savvy, mm -hmm. they're still able to back up their data with, with minimal effort and without, you know, really outside help. Um, now, as far as for the actual cost of backing up, now, like I said uh, you know, a few minutes ago, our cost for data recovery for each client is $500. Mm -hmm. However, um, if they had purchased a backup plan in the past, they may have only spent $50 or mm -hmm. $60. Mm -hmm. And that $60 investment can last them the rest of their life, right. right, into that backup program since they own that license now. Mm -hmm. um, so it's kind of like insurance. Uh -huh. You never need insurance until you need it. Right. 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 
Exactly. So backups yeah. is the same thing. Uh -huh. Okay. So I mean, does your group actually you actually run backup services for people or mm -hmm. okay? So if we do have clients that they don't understand backups, they don't understand how backups work, how to install right. the software, how to check their backups, mm -hmm. uh, you know, we provide the support for them. Okay. Um, a lot of the time, if it's simply you know just TeamViewer over uh, or you know remote desktop over the internet, um, there's a very small fee. It's twenty five dollars just to check your backups, mm -hmm. set you up you know with your pro preferred uh, backup program, etc. Uh, so that way we can ensure that, that you're set up properly and that you're not going to run into that issue later where and so on some regular basis and their computers chat with your computers, your computers stash all their data. Uh, yeah, so yeah, yeah, exactly. And, yeah. And, and another thing to point out too about a lot of these backup programs is automation. Mm -hmm. uh, once it's set up and once you get that first backup done, uh, as long as that hard drive you know, is connected to the computer whenever a backup starts, it generally works pretty well. Mm -hmm. um, so you can set it up on Monday, and 10 years down the road, you, know, you, you spent uh, probably a collective of two hours over 10 years just checking the backups to make sure that it shows a green light. Yeah, and it's much cheaper than spending the $2,000 on. Absolutely. You know, just because you at one point did something stupid. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely, and one huge point to toss out there is data recovery is a evolving practicing science, mm -hmm. right? As new drives come out, as uh, you know, Western Digital or Seagate or Toshiba, mm -hmm. as they come out with new hard drives and new storage mediums, uh, it's a cat and mouse game where data recovery now is constantly catching up. Mm -hmm. With that being said, because it's a practicing science, um, there's no guarantee that you can get your data back. Uh -huh. So you know, even for those that say, well, if my hard drive were to fail, it's not a big deal, I'll send right. it off to a data recovery lab. Right. But again, if you look at the, the hard drive again, if that damage were to be on the platters, right. then unfortunately, there is no recovering that data. Uh -huh. And that, that fallback of data recovery, and again, this is the platter here, right. um, so that fallback of, of having a data recovery company is ineffective now. Yeah, I mean, people I think have run into that already. It, you know, when you used to have your your data all on your 3.5 inch floppies, right? And, and now nobody has a, any drives that will work for 3.5 inch floppy right. anymore. Anyhow, so even if the data is still sitting there, it still happens to be good. Right. Actually, who, who, who can actually access that data? <laughs> Absolutely. I assume and, you guys probably could, but yeah. uh, we, we would try uh, certainly. Um, but I mean, really, the the, the big thing got to ask yourself is is on your computer, right? what can you afford to lose? Mm -hmm, right. And if you say, you know, I could have my computer fail today and I'm not worried about anything. Well, maybe you don't need a backup. Maybe you don't need a computer. <laughs> maybe, maybe you don't need a computer. But you know, if you take a look at, at all the different uh, data types, yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, oh. we have pictures from vacations. Uh, yeah. How, how many times have you gotten on the phone with somebody and they're, they're, they're sort of paused and they say, sorry, my computer is being slow today, right? Right, yeah. They're just trying to do their normal business and their computer is determining mm -hmm. the speed at which they can do it. And if their computer fails, you know, they're not going to be able to do anything for you. you know? Absolutely. I was uh, on a United Airlines plane at one point, second in line for takeoff, and announced that the central computers at United had failed, and they couldn't make one last calculation that they needed, and therefore that plane was not going to move until they, until they got their computers back up and running, because which is definitely a good thing. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> right. You don't want to be in the air without yeah, support. Absolutely. <laughs> right. No, no complaints. But it, they're just they are important. You know, mm -hmm. they determine our lives. So yeah, absolutely. Yeah, uh, having having good backups, having access, knowing that things are backed up, should allow you to sleep better, right? Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, you know, and just as like a prime example, uh, you know, for those that say that wouldn't happen to me, right? Uh, <laughs> well, we, we like to think that nothing bad would ever happen to any of us, but. Um, a prime example is we had a client uh, about six weeks ago. Uh, she came in um, with her significant other, and uh, we took it into the cleaning room. We opened it up, and we saw that there was platter damage. Uh, we plugged it into our computer, right, and we uh, we attempted to uh, isolate, you know, if there was a chance of recovery, mm -hmm. and unfortunately there wasn't. Now, for her, uh, the important data on there was her entire degree. Uh -huh. She used the same drive for her entire degree, and all of her homework was on there. And obviously, she was very upset. And you know, I, it's a little bit late for us at that point to try to educate her on backups. But um, you know, she, she appreciated the education, and, and she really wanted to turn around and, and really start backing up her data now. Mm -hmm. um, and unfortunately, uh, it, it, it took a bad situation it's an to expensive lesson for her. You know? yeah, 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 exactly. Well, I mean, she wasn't tuition, charged. but she paid more tuition there. Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, of course, we didn't charge her. You know, if we don't recover the data, there's no charge. But. Um, you know, backing up data is that important, yeah. no matter what you have on there, really. Right, right. It, it, no, it's, it's critical, and, and it's, it's only going to get more critical right, as time goes on. More and more and more of our mm -hmm. lives are now essentially boiled down to data 
that is being stored somewhere. Right. And, and, and really another thing to point out too is um, inside mechanical drives you have what's called uh, sector failures. Mm -hmm. So let's say for instance that this one here would have 1 billion, 900 million sectors, right? right? So out of that, for files, files are all made up of sectors, right? Mm -hmm. So if you have bad sectors, sectors can't be repaired, right? Mm -hmm. So if you have bad sectors, that file, even though you recovered the whole file, that file may not open or may not be available anymore. Backing up would have prevented that again. Ah, okay, mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, so there, there are lots of different ways and things can, can go wrong, lots of different problems that can happen. And so I, I guess what I'm, what I'm hearing from you, the take home message is that uh, you should back up, you should think carefully about your backup, perhaps talk to somebody like yourself about what you need in the way of backup, how frequently you should backup, what you should backup, how, when, where, and right. figure out a good solution that matches your sophistication, your time, your energy, your level of investment, and the value of your data, of course. Absolutely, yeah. and you know, with backups, uh, with, with current technology and backups, um, Data recovery, or I'm sorry, uh, data preservation has become more and more prominent in new methods on how it's being delivered. A prime example would be a system backup. Mm -hmm. If you were to take a backup of your entire system, there's plenty of companies out there that offer that type of backup service. Um, if you were to create a backup of your entire system and tomorrow you get a virus, mm -hmm. you just restart the computer, mm -hmm. tell it to restore from the most recent backup, and then you're done. Right. Virus is gone. Everything's right back to where it was when you backed up. Yeah. Uh, so you know, backups is is more more now usable uh, in everyday life rather than just the preservation of a file. Right, um, and the threat of cyber attacks and all seems mm -hmm. to be not, not diminishing, let us say. Uh, <laughs> ransomware is a huge one of those as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so that, that's, 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 well this is incredibly, uh, incredibly valuable stuff that you're, that you're telling us and great to know about and, and a wonderful preventative medicine as it were. So, so I want to, before we, before we close it, I'm going to take sure. a step to the side, ask you a completely off the wall question. It has nothing to do with data recovery and all. By all means. All right. So, if you had a choice of a superpower that you could either fly or be invisible, which would you choose and why? Hmm. Well, in society, we're all invisible uh, to the, uh, after the third, the third degree of separation. So, uh, I'd probably say fly. Uh -huh. uh, explore the world, see different cultures. Okay, okay, mm -hmm. good. Well, all right. Um, anyhow, so uh, Tyler, uh, Tyler Rouse, uh, data recovery engineer from Hawaii Recovery, has been telling us today all about why we should back up data. It's probably the big take home, right? Absolutely. Back up your data. Absolutely. <laughs> Do not come visit us. Right. Uh, if you can prevent visiting us, yeah. by all means you should. Yeah. yeah, it's cheaper, it's better, mm -hmm. it's quicker, it's going to save you time, save you money, save you energy. Right, and if anybody has any questions about backups, by all means reach out to our company, okay. we're, we're not money hungry. If you, okay. if, you, you know, if you were to call us and ask, them, ask us some questions, we're not going to tell you to come to the shop. If we can answer it over the phone, we'll be happy to help you. There we go. So, and I hope you'll come back to see uh, us, Likeable Science, uh, next week on uh, here on Think Tech Hawaii. Until then.